I'm Harry Boxer. Hi. Thanks for being here so early, too. Right now, for me, it's like, uh, you know, L.A. time's not a problem. Okay, folks, well, um, I'm Harry Boxer, the technical trader. I've been doing this for, believe it or not, 58 years. I'm 72, and I've been doing it since I'm a teenager. But the tech trader started after the market crashed in 2000. I decided I'm not staying in stocks overnight. I could, I'm going to day trade. I'm going to look at patterns. And it, it turned out that after looking at patterns, I used to just use daily charts. And now I'm looking at one-minute intraday charts. And believe it or not, the same patterns develop on all time frames. And um, I, it was, for me, it was a big aha that I could trade stocks and trade patterns that are created intraday and by the end of the day being cash if I want to be and not have that market risk about holding overnight. Back in 2000, it was much more important. Now it's not as critical, but I'm, I'm also a big believer in if you're trading anything that's a day trade, and it's one of those stocks that goes from, we had a stock that last week that went from $4, $4 to 73 in a day and a half. I mean, and if, if you want to be in that overnight, good luck, because the next day it was 20. <laughs> um, and so uh, my, my site consists of uh, uh, mostly day and swing trading. I, I believe in that, using price and volume surges. In other words, when stocks are surging with price and volume at the same time, breaking out of a consolidation pattern or a base or anything of that nature, uh, then uh, that kind of... Uh, thrust in a stock is usually an indicator of something that may be just starting. Uh, the pattern recognition about looking at patterns, you know, coils, pennants, triangles, um, anything, a flag, anything that's a continuation move that indicates a stock is paused or, or consolidating before the next leg up is what I look for all day, especially in the morning. Um, to me, the pattern recognition is very, very important to learn. Uh, unfortunately, I have a photographic memory. Uh, I really do, and so I remember going to a bar when I was a kid in my 20s, and all my friends would come over and say, three, four, five, four, five, three, four. Remember that number. I said, why? Because she just gave me your number, and they didn't have anything to write. So the next day, he would call me up, and I would give him the number. I still remembered it. Uh, but when, how that helps me in stock trading is that I can look at, look at a chart, and immediately, before I even draw the lines and draw the patterns in, which I do only for the benefit of my subscribers, because I want them to see what I'm seeing, but in terms of drawing those lines in. So if you look at my charts, and I'll show you quite a few examples today, you'll see lots of red lines on them. And Mike Thompson of Warden Brothers, who uh, is the publisher of TC2000, which is the chart program I use, you know, I used to do conversations and trainings for them and, uh, and spe speaking engagements. And they used to say, where's all these red lines coming from? And I go, take a look. And I went back in time, and there's a prior peak. I, I believe that highs and lows are very important, if, um, and particularly if they're within a shorter time frame over the last several months and years. You don't want to go back 15, 20 years. They're not as valuable. But if you look at something that happened three weeks or three months ago, especially if it had heavy volume, that's an indicator where a lot of people got in, perhaps, and didn't get out. And that, that may be overhead resistance when the stock reapproaches re that area. So to put that on, the, on your chart ahead of time is important because you don't have to look for it if it's on your chart. I'll show you some examples. So when, when I come in in the morning, the first thing I do is um, my morning routine consists of I'm on my site, LA time, 4.20 in the morning. That's, you know, 7, 7.20 here. And for the next hour, I'm searching for stocks that are gapping, running, and or thrusting, whatever you want to call it, pre-market, on huge difference in volume. Now, there's something called volume buzz, which I'll also show you later if I have time. Volume buzz is a proprietary indicator by Warden Brothers only. They're the only people who have it. It's really phenomenal. What it shows you is in, at any one time during the day, they can calculate what the average volume for that moment in time was for the last 100 days of an average. And you can th then take a look at what the volume, for example, in the first 10 or 15 minutes is compared to what it was over the last 100 days. And if it's 10, 15, 20, 30 times more than average, and it's pre-market, that tells me there's some money flowing into the stock and the stock is thrusting price-wise, and I want to take a look at that stock that moment to see what's cooking with that. Whether that thrust has broken through a base, out of a base pattern, broken through some key overhead resistance, that kind of stuff. And then maybe triggering a strong move, not only intraday for that day, but invariably, if you can ask some of my subscribers, there's a few here, here in the room, invariably the, um, that move, the initial thrust, that sets off a stock is not just for a day trade. It, be, it becomes a swing trade and sometimes 
like I remember an, a, a year and a half ago when NVIDIA had a gap up and, and popped up and pulled back and we bought it for a day trade. I put a swing on it a few days later and it went, you know, I went, a year and a half later, it went from 39 to 265, that type of thing. So we, get a, we had a stock last year called Tandem Diabetes, TNDM, which I put out at four. It just broke out from two. I put it out as a swing at four. It went to 53. So there's that kind of stuff in my room that we see all the time. I catch stocks when they start moving, whether it be for a day trade, a swing trade, or even a long-term investment. And the key I tell everybody is the number one thing that people have a problem with, the number one question I get how do I stay in a stock? I keep selling it too early. You ever, you ever have that experience? Right. And the reason you sell it too early is because you see that profit and you have angst about losing it. And as soon as the stock starts pulling back, you sell it. Right? And that's the problem. Why not sell a third? Why not raise your stop loss on the rest? Why not let the stock run? See, the number one thing people do, you are doing, folks, not necessarily you guys, because some of you are very experienced. I have some very accomplished traders in this room that are subscribers, but the number one mistake people make is they sell too soon. They don't know where to stop a stock. They don't let their profits run. They cut their profits short and let their losses run. And what do you do? You average down. No bueno. Average up. I'm serious. It's hard to think about averaging up. The biggest winner I ever had in my life, I'll tell you a quick story, it was in 1999, a company called DNA, the symbol is DNA, it was called Diana Corp, it's on the New York Stock Exchange. <coughs> the rumor was that they were gonna have the, an uh, inter internet uh, server that was gonna be 10 times faster than even Cisco had. So the stock started jumping. Now, my institutional guy who knew the company told me about it at 11, so when it was 17 in a week, I bought some on margin. I didn't know better. <laughs> <laughs> but I bought it on margin, and then when it got to 27, I doubled my position on margin because I had all this free margin buying power. When it went to 47, I doubled it again, and it went to 67, I doubled it again. I had 6,000 shares from 1,000. So at, when it got to 85, he says to me, what does it look like? And I drew my lines on the chart. I said, the top of the channel, if it goes on this angle, is about 120. He goes, you're kidding me. I said, no. So I remember, this is a great story for those of you who haven't heard it. I was on the beach in Hawaii at 3.30 in the morning, walking on the, with my cell phone. Don't forget, there was no internet trading then. And I'm on, the, I'm on the phone with my broker saying, where is it? He says, it just opened at 103, and it's now at 108. I, I go, well, what's my order? He goes, you have it in all of it at 120. That was my projection. What did I do? Raise it to 125. Are, am I, are you kidding me? My average is 37 on the stock. It's 108. And I have it in at 120, and I need another five points? Greed is not good. <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't care what Michael Douglas said. <laughs> uh, so anyway, long story short, the all-time high to the penny, 120. And it traded about seven, 8,000 shares there. Now, I don't know if I would have got all off there, but I would have got a good chunk of it at the all-time high. It closed at 103 that day. The next day was 92. I stopped out at 93. I had to have a stop somewhere, right? My institutional guy who gave it to me sold it at 47 on the way down, and it went to one, delisted, and now it's out of business, bankrupt. Long, long story short, when, and you're in my room, and I, every single trade I give you day trade-wise, I tell you what the stops, targets are, where to sell it. Not just where to sell it, I will say uh, target number one, target number two. Uh, if it gets usually to one, I'll say take a third off or a half off, whatever you're comfortable with, and then we uh, will raise your stop. I keep, like this BPTH, do you remember that? We wrote it all the way up. I kept saying, raise your stop, raise your stop, raise your stop. When it got into the 60s, I said, you got to sell the stock, because if it goes down, it's going to be ugly. Well, the next day was 20 or 25. I don't know where it is now. I think it went back up to like 40, didn't it? 41 this morning. So, I mean, you know. That's the way it goes. So in the morning when I come in, because we don't have a lot of time today, and, I, and this isn't a four-hour training seminar, which I often do, but I wanted to give you a flair for what we do at the Tech Trader. The Tech Trader consists of a trading room with several hundred people in it, uh, and I've got to tell you, folks, after all these years I've been doing this, and it's like almost 20 now, about 19 years, I've really culled it down to some of the best traders I've ever seen. A couple of them are in the room. And um, so there are no negative people. There are no... Um, Assholes, 
if you want to call it that. I, I, if I see a person like that, they're gone. I give them one warning. If they continue their, their bullshit, I, I ask them to leave. I want people to be comfortable in my room. I want you to come in for two weeks for free, no credit card, no credit card. Just sign up and join up. For th I, you, I can't tell you how many people have told me that in the th two free weeks, they made enough money to cover a whole year's subscription. Uh, you know, and then they're riding for free for the rest of the year and they're making money. I have one guy, uh, or Orca, his name is, uh, he, he told me he made $3 million in, in 18 months and he just sold his company and he bought an island. <laughs> He's trading from an island. I love it. If I can make enough money, I'll uh, probably join him. So what I'm looking for in the morning is stocks that are gapping, thrusting with big volume, maybe five to 10 times minimum vo average volume. I want stocks that are th popping out of a consolidation zone and then giving me a little pullback or consolidation or sideways movement, meaning a bull coil, a bull flag, a bull pennant, maybe there would be a little bit on the downslope or a little bit on the upslope or sideways. But I want to see that action and I want to see it get quiet. I want to see it come down to a point where I call it, and I coined the phrase, the low volume ebb. You know, and, and, when, when Tides go out and they stall for they stall for just a second before they come back in. That's called ebb tide. Uh, the same thing happens in stocks. It's amazing. It's called a balance between buyers and sellers. I also call it a Mexican standoff. Basically between buyers and sellers because the, 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 they want to see who's going to blink first. And and the truth is, if you're buying before that, you're anticipating. You can all of a sudden go down because sometimes one out of three times that pattern breaks down. Two out of three times it breaks to the upside. So the reliability is pretty good. It's close to 70% that a bull consolidation after a price volume thrust in the beginning of the day often leads to an extension of that move. I call it a momo, momentum. When you have a, a stock that has momentum and it's starting to thrust out of that first consolidation, it'll often go pop and then trend the rest of the day upward. That's what we specialize at the tech trader. I find stocks that are moving. I find stocks that are tradable. Sometimes they're monsters, two, three hundred percent in a day. Sometimes they're, you know, ten or fifteen percent. It doesn't matter. But I put out lots of ideas. And people always ask me, well, if you put out 15, 20 ideas in one day. There's 12,000 stocks out there. If I can give you one tenth of one percent of all the stocks in the universe that are moving, don't you want to hear about it? All right. And then you don't you want to make that decision? Now, there's guys out there who will give you one or two ideas a day, and they will go away and they come back in an hour or two. I'm on all day. You'll see my charts all day. When I put a webinar up, my charts are up. You'll see me scrolling through the charts. You'll see me drawing lines. And then I'll come back and, and do updates five, six times a day, sometimes for 20 minutes, sometimes for an hour. depends on what, what I think is necessary. And during those, I'll show you how I change the angles of ascent. I change the trend lines. I'll change the support resistance levels. I'll show you what the next projected prices are. I'll tell you where to raise your stop in, to. So, and I have people in my room um, that are professional golfers. That They come in in the morning, they take two or three ideas, they put in, based on my, tell them, I tell them what to buy, they'll buy a couple of ideas, and they'll put their uh, sell orders in and their stop loss their orders in, and they'll go play golf, and by the sixth hole, they'll check and, and look at their, see how much made, they made or lost that day. And I said, guys, that takes all the fun out of trading. And he goes, but it takes the emotion out. Right? So um, it, it's kind of like, so I'm not telling everybody to come in my room, buy a couple of stocks, and go play golf. Because you won't, you won't learn anything. But uh, m my number one goal is to teach people what I know. I, I wrote a book called Profitable Day in Swing Trading. It's a little thin book here, but it tells me basically I decided to write down everything I know about day trading and stock trading and, and swing trading and put it in a book for everybody. And you can get it on Barnes & Noble or Amazon. So. People have told me when they read that book and then they came into the room, they had a much better understanding of what I'm talking about. And I think that's, that's the only reason. Look, folks, I think I made six or 700 bucks last year on royalties. I'm not gonna get rich on this book and that's not why I'm talking about it. I talk about it because I want people to, especially people that are newbies, I have a lot of people that are newbies too who come into the room. They're not really clear or, on um, what my methods are and usually, if you're not an accomplished trader, you'll be overwhelmed in the beginning. What I say is come into the room for two weeks and just check it out, don't do any trading, or do paper trading. Now obviously, there's a big difference between trading with your money and trading with paper, okay? It's easier, much easier. When it comes to pushing that button, buy, and, and it's your money, it's a different story, right? It's easy to go, oh yeah, let's buy 100,000 shares or something, you know, or whatever. So, but that, that's what I recommend, that you paper trade in the beginning using my recommendations. So in the morning, I'm looking for those kind of patterns that are thrusting. Let's see if I have proper internet connection. I'll show you the kinds of stocks that I look for.
Now, here's an uh, internet company called Wuba. Then this is years ago. I think it was 19, uh, 2013 or something like that. I wrote my book in 2015. These are charts that appear in my book. Here is an opening breakaway gap. See it here? This is where it closed. It gapped to there, and it ran up there. Now, a lot of people are not going to be wanting to chase a stock that's already run from, oh, it looks like about 32 to about 35 in the first 8, 10 minutes. But then it pulled back down and formed a nice little wedge, tried to break out. There wasn't enough volume, and then it went sideways for three hours, frustrating a lot of traders. But it didn't go down. So it, would, the, would that stock have been sold? Not necessarily, because it never broke support. Look what happened when it broke out right there. See that one bar? And see the volume right there? To me, that was a breakout point. And from that level, at 35, it went up to 38 and a quarter. It was a nice day trade, 10%. And you notice that at no point did this stock break this low, that low, or any of these lows all the way through here. Never broke a low. So that's what I'm, my point being is that when you're in a stock that trends like this, and believe me when I tell you, this is not a rare example. Five or 10 times you see this kind of pattern every trading day, every day. It's my job to try to find those stocks, along with some people in our room that are brilliant traders that come up. So let, here's the beauty of my room. I have two eyes. I can just watch so many stocks. But I have three or 400 people in the room every day, so we're talking about six to 800 eyes watching, watching the market. And how about this one? It just broke out. I look at it, I go, I, mi I missed it. And then I go, boom, I, I put a day trade on it. Because that's the beauty of when you're in a room with accomplished traders. Now, not only accomplished traders, but there's people in my room that love to mentor. They like to help people that are newbies. I mean, it's just their thing. You know, they, they want to, uh, uh, that's what I talked about earlier about the really nice people in my room. Uh, if, I, I want a clean room where everybody's comfortable trading. So Wuba is an example of just one example, and I'll give you a couple more. Now, it says pennants, coils, and flags. What I'm talking about is in the beginning when the thrust occurs. What's following that? What action follows that? A pennant is something that looks like a wedge, but it's narrower. A wedge is obviously more symmetrical. A flag is something that's more of a square. And those are the kind of patterns I look for, something that's pausing, consolidating, digesting the early gain. And the volume gets quiet. If you take a look here, you see that huge gap right there? Oh, let, let me, let me get, make that a little bigger. There you go. All right, so here's the pop. Look at that huge, huge gap. And then a huge run up. So I don't like chasing stocks either. So I wait for the first pullback. Here's a three wave corrective pullback a bounce and then another retest, and then this is what's called the wedge. Notice at the apex, near the edge here, near the, uh, with, where the two lines meet. They say that about 75 to 80 percent of a wedge, when it gets to that point, a stock's ready to break out. So look how low the volume is down here. You see down here how quiet it is, right there? This is called the low volume ebb. And usually you'll see smaller bars, lower volume, at, at an apex of a pennant, a coil flag, or in this case, here's a flag. Here's a coil. You see, there's three patterns in a row, wedge, flag, and coil. All three are bullish consolidation patterns. So in this case here, break out, buy it. Runs up, consolidates, drifts a lot lower, runs up, coils, and then keeps stair-stepping its way higher. We, and I remember on this one, we bought it at 4.58 or something, and by the end of the day, it was $1.25 higher, and that's you know, a 25% gain in one day. And notice that it never broke, uh, this never broke that low, that low, this low, or that low, and all day it just kept trending. The beautiful stock is, the, the beauty of any stock is that it travels in a 45 degree angle or close to it. But in that kind of parallel channel, it's amazing how many stocks will do parallel channels all day. And if they don't break the trend line, why are you selling it? Because you're afraid of losing your profit. And I'll guarantee you that anybody who bought it here and had it here, and watch it go down to there, probably panicked out just before rent started to move. I'm going to break out even. By the way, who here invests to break even? Anybody? No, I don't see one hand raised. So the, po the point being is that it's amazing how many people, and this is why there's a thing called overhead resistance. Why is it overhead resistance? Because people who got sucked in, say stock goes from four to six. People who got sucked in at six and watch it go down to four and three quarters, as soon as that stock gets back to six, I'm selling it. That's, all right, I want to break even. Oh, really? That's what you're investing for. You know what I do? If, if I see a stock that comes down like that, and, and, and if it breaks my support, I stop out, I, I'm fine with stopping out. You know what my favorite expression is? Thank you, sir. May I have another? I, I really feel like 
Uh, my brother-in-law, who passed away at a very young age, ta taught me one thing about stocks. He said, it takes a cast iron stomach, and he used to say balls of steel, <laughs> because it's, it's tough to trade. But he also said to me that you have to be um, willing to take quick losses, because four, five, even six losses in a row, if they're like a quarter or a nickel or a dime, whatever they are, one little pop on a stock that's running is going to make up for all those losses very quickly, if not then some. So let your profits run and cut your losses short. In my room, if you're stopped out, you're stopped out. I mean, if I was 100%, I would say that probably I'm in a 70, 75% range in terms of successful picks. And the 25 or 30% or 28%, whatever it is, I don't think it's 30%. But the stocks that don't work, you usually are stopped out pretty quickly and just move on and stop lamenting because it's like, let me equate you for all you golfers out there. Who is playing really good golf and suddenly you hit a shitty shot, right? You know that the next three or four holes, you're toast because it's in your head. Same thing with trading. It's, if it's in your head for trading, then you are going to be making mistakes. Stay disciplined. The number one thing is discipline in trading. You have to use stop losses. If you come into my room, you don't lose stop losses, and I find out about it, I'm going to beat you up. Um, look, I think I'm a great teacher, uh, and I've been told that. And I also took a test many, many years ago, a psychological test, that uh, you know, tells you what you're good at doing. It said I have a 99 percentile ability to teach. You know what the problem was? I was a three in empathy. <laughs> I guess that's the New York Jewish kid in me, but whatever. So my, I have a, a lady that's been with me since we started this site in 2001. Her name's Kathy, and she can, she's considered like the den mother. Kathy used to say, anybody who complains about, Harry, but what really was, was abusive. She goes, he's not abusive. You haven't had your butt chewed out. You haven't been indoctrinated properly at the tech trader. <laughs> Uh, look, I, I'm, I may be tough, but I think I, it's almost like tough love. I really like everybody in my room. I care about people. I don't want to have anybody uh, upset with me, but at the same time, um, and it's not about stupid questions. It's about not listening. Now, if you ask me the same thing three, four times, that's, I'm going to get annoyed. So, just, and also, now, let me tell you, because this is a limited time today, what I do. I do live updates all day. Constant webinar. The webinar is up in the morning. It's on all day. You see my charts all day. Okay? You hear my voice, unfortunately for some people, or unfortunately for others, a lot. I'm on, I'm on a site a lot. I'm on a site after the market closes all day, at night. I do something called the charts of the day. Every night you get a video from me, 10 or 12, 15 stocks that were hot that day, and I want to show you why. I do a weekend webinar. That's the big thing. If you are not in the weekend webinar, you're losing out on my most important thing I do for people. That's a complete review of all longs and shorts that I consider significant that week. The markets, the technical indicators, and some of the major ETFs like the SMH, LABU, and the FAS, which is semiconductors, biotech, and financials. I think those three groups lead the market, so I watch them carefully. Um, so those are some of the services, and uh, you can subscribe to any or all of them. And I, people tell me I'm out of my mind for charging as little as I do, but I, I, I would rather have uh, people learn. And the only thing, it's funny, the best traders I've ever lost, I've always asked them, well, why are you no longer here? I'm comfortable enough now to do, you, after being with you for years, to do, this, to do this on my own. And then they always come back. I say, why'd you come back? I missed the camaraderie of the group. All right, so let's move on. This is an example of stocks that we have in our room, that, and this happens every day. How do I know that? I could show you charts from yesterday that did the same thing. We had a stock last week called Biopath. Some of you remember that, BPTH. I recommended it at 465 on the first trade that day. And by the end of the day, it was 14. The next day, it was 73. I got everybody out in the 60s. I told them this is ridiculous. It's beyond, you know, sometimes a thin stock that with a low float, under 100 million, the stock has under a million shares outstanding, and it traded like 50 or 60 million shares in one day. So they turned it over 50 times in one day. I mean, talk about in and out trading. I know a lot of people told me they traded it seven or eight times. So, um, that, you know, I'm not saying that's the kind of stock we specialize in, but every once in a while, we find something that's emerging in the beginning, and at the end of the day, it's up two, three, four hundred percent. That We look for those every month. We, we, we're fortunate if we can get them. So, because I'm, I'm, I've got to go through this quickly, I look for five wave moves. I think that Elliott Wave analysis is, is basically the, the, uh, the essence of Elliott Wave is that stocks tend to move in five waves. Up, one, wave one. Consolidate or pull back a little bit, wave two. Wave three is sometimes the biggest wave. Uh, wave four is a consolidation similar to wave two. And then the fifth wave spikes up. I tell everybody, if you see a five-wave move intraday in the morning before the market get, gets to lunch hour, sell a stock. Invariably. 
80% of stocks that go five ways before lunch hour, they're done for the day. Why are they done for the day? Anybody guess? Most of those, uh, do you know that most institutional traders who, who either trade a brokerage firm's account or a hedge fund's account or any kind of account where they are being paid a percentage of the profits will go to lunch and say, boom, I'm selling it, I'm going to lunch, I'm taking my profits. It's amazing how often a stock that's active will pause just around lunch hour, either somewhere between 12 and 1 o'clock usually. It's amazing. And then in the afternoon, they just go sideways. So it's, uh, my, my brother-in-law used to say it's opportunity cost. Be, being, being a stock that's moving, uh, don't worry about something else that isn't. Uh, and if you're in a stock that doesn't work, usually, usually, in swing trades, if it doesn't work in three to five days, it's not going to be good. In day trades, if it doesn't work in the first 45 minutes to an hour, it may not be good. It may not be the kind of stock. Look, if my timing's off, um, if I, like I said, if I was 100%, I don't know if I'd still be doing this. I probably would because I like doing it. And it's, you know what they say, if you like what you're doing, it's not really work. But uh, my goal is to be on an island with Richard Bramson somewhere. <laughs> you know, I actually visited his island, ne I thinking, ne Nectar Island or whatever it's called. Uh, it's pretty, a pretty ama amazing place. But more importantly, the, the, being in my room is, is where it's a learning process. I tell everybody, if you're in my room two or three months, it'll be like two or three years in a classroom. It will be. And not only that, but you'll be getting on, online experience. A couple more uh, examples of five-wave moves intraday. Again, I'm not going to be able to get anywhere near what I want to, and we got started late. And I only have 45 minutes, and that means we only have a few more minutes. But here's an example of a five-wave move, folks. Take a look. Popped wedge. See it? Broke out, didn't get through the high, and backed off, but it never broke the trend line or the apex, and then exploded. And then it went back and forth and for formed another wedge and broke out again. This is a one, two, three, four, Five wave perfect move. It's, it's amazing how many stocks will tend to do something like this. Notice at the end of the day, it went nowhere. Now, it didn't fall apart, but it, you know, if, you would, if, you, if you had it up there and you didn't sell it and it's down here, by the end of the day, you're saying, yeah, I should have sold it over here, right? right. Ideally, because you, and by the way, hindsight's 100%, right? <laughs> so we'll move on because I don't need to show you every example. By the way, interesting that it's MLNX, you see it there? Melonix was acquired by. Was it, who bought them, NVIDIA? Yeah. yeah. This is way back in 2013. I wrote my book in 2015. And you'll see the same kind of pattern. Watch this. In this case, gap. There we go. Gap, run up, coil. Very quiet near the apex. Take a look how low the volume was down here. See what I'm talking about? The low volume ebb right there. And from that point, even if you didn't buy it early on, and you, or, or you either bought, you can start to add here or not, or buy it right there. That's what I recommend. From that point, about 37 and a half, it went up to 39 and a quarter, a buck and a half right there. Then it flagged, popped, flagged, popped, and then wedged and popped and kept going. But it never broke support. And it was, it was a nice one, two, three, four. Watch this. The fifth wave was five waves as well. It's called the fifth of a fifth. Here's a one, two, three, four, five waves. So basically, at that point, it was the fifth of the fifth, and sure enough, it's the top, top of the day. And where did it occur? A little after one. So if you sold it there at 1230, it wouldn't have been so bad, right? Right. So that's what I'm referring to, that in my room, we find stocks that are moving, and we trade them properly. What I mean by properly is we sell a portion of the position at, a portion of the position at the first target and then raise your stop, sell another portion at the second target. I like to have a third to a quarter of my position when I'm done, after two, two tranches, meaning uh, uh, after two targets have been met. You don't know how far a stock's going to run during the day. But as long as you met a couple targets and took your, prof took your profits there, the rest of it's house money, right? It's, so if you had 5,000 shares of a stock and you sold 2,000 and 2,000 and you still had 1,000 shares and the stock keeps running, it's more money. But the point is, is you're, you're comfortable. Or you can just keep raising your stops all day. You don't have to sell anything. Here's the bottom line. You have to develop a disciplined, organized, focused approach. That's what I'm here for. That's why you pay me. People always are saying to me, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I go, that's what you pay me for. Don't, you, you don't have to thank me. And I go, it's cool to get thanks. But I'm, I'm telling you, uh, I just want you guys to be successful and make money. That's what, the, that's what investing is. Anybody here investing to lose money, unless you have, need, need a tax loss carry for it. <laughs> I closely monitor all the early price volume action as well as pre-market. 
I use that indicator because it's called Warden Brothers Volume Buzz Indicator. The volume buzz is that indicator that shows you what percentage of volume is trading at that moment in time versus the average over the last 100 days. And then we create a focus list. So I will put the focus list up about an hour, hour 20 minutes before the opening so that you have that list and you can go through them yourself. But then what, what happens is at about 5.20 my time, 8.20 your time here in, L, here in the East, I come on and I do what we call the pre-market talk where I go over the focus list. Focus list can be 15, 20 stocks. But I'll go over every one of them and then I'll determine at that point while we're going over them in the pre-market whether this should be a day trade and I'll put a day trade alert on with price targets and stop losses. Or I'll say I'm going to leave this on a watch list for now because I want to see the early action. I want to see how it opens and how it thrusts. And I'll invariably add a few more. Um, and sometimes in the first update, which by the way, 10 minutes after we open, 10 minutes, that's all I need. I want to see the first 10 minutes of action. I'll go over the whole list. I spend sometimes an hour uh, or less, but I'm usually on from uh, about 9.40 your time to about uh, 10.30, 10.45, analyzing the early trends and giving you an, And I always tell people, they always say to me, well, I don't know which ones to buy. You, 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 you seem to like these, but you'll hear my voice when I say, now this is a good pattern. Or I'll say something like, I really like this one. Okay, so when you hear that from me, that, that's the trigger, it should be a trigger for you to maybe take action, something like that. And now here's the volume buzz indicator, you can read it real quickly. At any given point in the day, the indicator looks back over the previous 100 days and normalizes the volume at that point in the day, makes a comparison of today's volume versus that norm, and gives you what we call the volume buzz. Um, I, I love 5,000, 10,000% volume buzz. It tells me that huge differences in volume are suddenly coming into a stock. I don't care what the reasons are. You know, in the morning is the only time you hear me even mention fundamentals. Why? Because everybody wants to know, well, why is the stock gapping up? I'll let you know, but I'm not going to mention fundamentals the rest of the day. It's all technical. My site is a technical trading site based on my analysis, based on technical indicators, and based on 58 years of trading experience. The number one best channel, well, a pattern I told you, when you, my favorite pattern is that rising intraday parallel channel with high relative volume. Because when a stock trends, it tends to stay in that channel, bottom of the channel, top of the channel. You'd be surprised how often it'll do that all day. I showed you just half a dozen examples. Just a couple more examples, because we're running out of time, about what I look for in the morning in terms of charts. Now, Anyone who looks at this chart is going to say, um, gap, run, coil. I think I showed you, showed you this one. XPO Logistics. Interesting that the stock went up to about 120. But you'll note, note the price here when I first spotted the stock. Eighteen, the stock went up tenfold from here. Gap coil, look at that perfect coil. Notice at the apex of that coil how quiet the tiny little bar, see them? And the volume is barely trading. And then it pops and does the same thing. Quiet volume, it pops and does the same thing. Flagging, coiling, all day you never had to sell the stock until the market closed, ideally. This parallel channel happens in dozens and dozens of stocks every day, every day. When you come to the tech trader, you'll see me noting these stocks and probably trading these. But if you bought this stock when it first broke out there, which we did that day, and it was about 20, 20 and a quarter, and at the end of the day, it was up almost 24. That's 18, 20% day trade, not bad. But notice there never broke support there, 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 here, and there, all day, until it closed near the high for the day going away. That's the kind of stocks, this is a day trader's dream, this, this pattern, day trader's dream. Never, never, it never breaks support. It, it also never goes through the top of the channel. Pop, pull back, pop, pull back, pop. So that's what I look for every day in the techtrader.com. If you come in with me and spend a couple of weeks, I'm sure you're going to be a member because it's not only a fun place, we have a lot of funny people too, but it's also a place that's a safe place to trade and it's a place where you have, get an education. And, I, and from my mind, and some, I think you can talk to my subscribers, it's a place where you get accurate information and a high percentage of successful trades. We have a few minutes. I'd like to take this time, uh, folks. I, unfortunately, the presentation is going to be over here. Uh, I appreciate everybody being here, but I want, I want questions. Who? Now, you had a question. Uh, is your preferred method to use Monday to start? 
Yes. I also look at five minute and 15 minute charts all day. Because a 15 minute chart tells me three weeks. I want to see the last three weeks. And, and also when I do swing trades, it's based off 15 minute and hourly charts. Anybody? Absolutely. Because stocks don't usually gap and fill the same, you know, in, 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 same day. If it's a significant gap, like NVIDIA at 39, it still hasn't filled that gap. And it might not for years or ever. So there's certain, uh, Facebook, if you look at the Facebook breakaway gap when it was in like the 40s, look at the chart long term, you'll see that that's that gap that just kept going up. And this is years later, it still hasn't filled that gap. So you know, there's two things in my room that I don't care about. I know it sounds funny. I, I care about gaps from the standpoint of support. If a stock gaps, say stock is at eight, it opens at 10, that's the gap. And then goes up to 14, coming down, I want 10 to hold, that's the gap support. If it breaks into the gap, that's a problem usually for me, that day, that day. But on, on a long-term basis, gaps may get filled, but it's, I don't, number one, I don't think the philosophy about it must fill the gap, that's bullshit. That's number one. Number two, what's, it, there's just so many rules in trading that 200-day uh, moving averages, forget about it. I'm serious. If you're a short-term trader, 200 days are meaningless unless, unless the 200-day crosses the 50, that's called the golden cross. I don't even have a 200-day moving average on my charts. For those of you who want to know what's on my charts, it's 10, 21, 50. Those are the moving averages I use every day. 10, 21, and 50-day moving averages. When they cross over, now, let me give you one last tip before I leave. How, how to find the stocks that are going to make a major move. When the stocks come down and down and down, it may be for months or years, and then bases out. That first thrust, watch the moving averages. If they're, flat, if they're already flattened out after coming down for months, and they're going sideways, and then they, the three of them, the 10, 21, and 50, cross over each other. That crossover is a buy signal, number one. The, the best time to buy a stock for a long-term trade is after the stock pops through those and pulls back down and consolidates above those moving averages and it does it on a low volume, buy the shit out of the stock because it's going to pop and go and pop and go and probably in, in a vast 80%, in my, my opinion, 80% of the time when a stock gaps, runs, consolidates above the moving averages which have crossed over after a big downtrend, that's a major trend change and you want to be in the stock. And, and also one other thing for you option traders. People have told me in my room that people have, uh, I'm extremely successful trading my swing trades using options. If they see I put out a stock in December, they may buy the March, the March, say a stock is 10 bucks, they may buy a, Mar a March 12 and a half. And invariably the stock is 15 or 18 and they're making a lot of money. Um, Susie's here, she's a successful option trader. There's a lot of people in this room who are really good. Our buddy Roger, is, that's all he does is trade options and straddles and butterflies and all the other stuff that they, it goes along with option trading. Um, for, I, I invite everybody to come into my room for free for two weeks with no credit card. You don't just go into the main site. I'll show you the site real quickly. And you can, all you gotta do is go to the tech, this is the trading room by the way. If you go to the techtrader.com, the techtrader.com, see this band here? Sign up for free. Oh, it went, it went dead, huh? It must be my competitors. <laughs> anyway, if you go to the site, you'll see a, a, a yellow bar that says sign up for free now. No credit card. Just do it for two weeks. It doesn't cost you a thing. You may make more money than you've ever dreamed. Thank you for being here, everybody. Right, uh, we have a